thought I was prepared. I wasn't. Okay. So, we got all the groupings here. And the first thing I did when I was writing this, I actually wrote this acoustically. So, it was just, you know, just this, pretty much. But... That doesn't sound very big, so what we do is record it twice, and then this one's all the way on the left side of your ear, if you're wearing ear things, or have good speakers, and then this one's all the way over on the right, and then it just sounds real big, it's real big, that side and that side. So, once I had that going, I'm like, how do I get some more energy going in this thing? So add a little bit of kick. We got some, got some kick going. This is for something else I'll explain later. <laughs> and then, instead of just samples, I recorded some just drumsticks right there. And one thing you can do to make it more interesting and feel faster is these aren't just in the center or on one side. I have it so that it is bouncing back and forth left to right. So it adds another sense of movement. So when I turn that off, you know, it's kind of, it's cool. It's just kind of boring. It's just right down the middle, right down the middle of your ears. But then when I do that, I have it set up so it's bouncing back and forth. So it's this other sense of rhythm to make the whole thing feel more energetic. Added these little guys for some back beats. That kind of up upbeat thing always makes it feel faster. And then tambourines. Just a nice way to add some high-end frequency sounds. Get some energy going. And then, so once we zoom out a little bit. Got that tambourine going, high energy. Vocals. We've doubled those vocals so they sound thicker. Especially on that part when it's kind of like a light vocal. I wanted that to be more powerful, so I recorded twice. So instead of. That's just one. And you know you can't stay the same. Every and we get two. And it's kind of got this cool little Every phasey year we effect. To change new so like Fall Out, Boy, Fall Out Boy does that a lot in their stuff. Because they sing real high. And then it sounds cool that way. And here's something Every year that I like doing. I like the weird little sounds. So this guy... is actually a sample that I made by recording my own vocals. So we'll see it here in a sec. New, you, new, you, new, you. So if I take all these effects off. Then we turn them all on. That's what we get this thing. But that wasn't weird enough, so I reversed it. So you take this guy and you just reverse him. So we did that. So I don't need this guy. Reversed him, and then we get, it's like this kind of swelling sound every time. So those are those weird little sounds I like to add in. You get these little things that help with transitions that kind of draw you into the next part. Same thing here. So these just add a lot of energy when you're going from part to part. So that's all going on in the background. And the other cool thing is just like to grow up it's true every year we forget to change so that was the first chorus each chorus i try to build a little bit more 
So let's look at that background vocals we have going each time. You? So you can see each time that stack that is active gets a little bigger. So we have... Something bubbling up and you so that's the first one. Can't stay the same. Got harmonies going Every here. We get to grow up, it's true. But then the Every second chorus. The right so it feels wider. I put some more vocals left and right. And then the final year. chorus. It's the right something I had that super high falsetto. So that's like, anytime you have those true. super high frequencies, it feels more energetic. So I try to leave those for the last chorus to make those feel biggest. The other thing that I do to build each chorus, even though they're you know technically the same, kind of building production-wise, instrumentation-wise, first chorus, we just have the guitars. And a couple synths. This little guy. Got that guy going. And then second chorus. I add on that second part of the chorus, it's a little bigger with that other synth part added in. And then more guitar parts active there as well. And then it goes into the bridge. The other sound design piece, when, and when I say sound design, I mean like kind of just figuring out what I want that sound to be like. You know, it's not a normal piano. It's a piano, but then it's got kind of an interesting delay on it. I add this little crystal effect is what I call it. So I have another thing that I'm sending it to where instead of just this, it's this little twinkling, little twinkling up above it there, if you can hear that. And then the last chorus, that's when you just kind of throw everything at it. That's when you, we throw all the synths. The other thing that we're doing here, that, that bouncing and delays, it adds some extra, it feels faster because it has those delays going, even though it's all the same tempo the whole song. Having that, that always feels faster when you have those extra little beats in there. And then we have this arpeggiator where it's so overall that's gonna feel just faster in general. We also add a couple of other guitars here. Some higher guitars. And then again, that final fully harmonized last chord. bass sound. So I just spend some time finding that right bass sound. And this is another more sound designy aspect. Oh yeah, T Swift does some harmonies for sure, Steve. I know T Swift. I know you're a fan. I don't know her like personally, but like I know her. I know what you mean. I mean, like, yeah. What do you guys think? Any other questions? That was kind of the little more detailed breakdown of what's going on in that video. And I also just kind of send all those effects over here. And what that lets me do is there's this whole other layer of production on while all those sounds are going on, part of the mix is how loud do I want them to be at each part? Uh, this is called automating. So you're kind of changing the settings as the song is going. So for example, I'm cutting 
cutting some of the frequencies of that acoustic guitar during the verse to send it more to the background so that the vocals can take lead. So here, they're the lead. That's where the focus is. And then that EQ slowly takes some of that high end off, which just leaves a little more focus for the vocals. You can see I'm doing that with volume too during the different parts. I record vocals. It depends. It depends. Uh, for each chorus, well, the verses are different, so I record those different. But the chorus, unless there's, unless I'm delivering it differently, yeah, I'll just copy and paste it. So, uh, this is a, these are the same vocals each time. But there might be some other songs where like. Maybe I'm doing it like lighter. Like it's the right, right feel of something bubbling up. But then like the last chorus, maybe you want to do it like stronger. So it's like the right feel of something bubbling. Then like you're just like singing it differently. So then I would do it different. But if it's the same, I'm just gonna copy and paste them because that's way faster. And I also just do like a bunch of takes, a bunch of takes, and then you find even down to the syllable which one so like for a lot of pop music unless you're Adele or like some really good singer this is what's going on behind the scenes so we've got um this is my so this is I keep all this because I'm I probably I probably don't need to but I don't delete anything so <laughs> this is this is the original takes before any editing. It's the right feel of something bubbling up and you know you can't stay the same. So you can hear it's a little out of tune in Every some places. Year we get to grow up. And those are that's actually just a compilation of many different takes, even down to like the syllable for which one. So you can see these are the different areas. Um, I guess I didn't do any like syllables, but I did like one word here. Like a phrase here, a phrase here, a phrase here. And these are all from different takes. Um, so I record it through and then I choose the best parts of each take. And then once I do that, I then tune it to be basically perfect. So that's it's where. Right feel of something bubbling up and you know you can. So that's where. It's the right feel. Of something bubbling up and you know you can't stay the same it's so like that's a little off on the tune up and versus you know you can't stay the same that's and that's like right on because that's where i go through and i can tune each note actually this probably isn't the one that i tune because this would be up here so you can kind of fix everything so here's where it was And then I just move it right up there, and then all of a sudden, I'm Sam Smith. No. So that's how that works. And that's probably how it works for all of your favorite artists. Sorry to break your hearts if you think that everybody's perfect. But then you, there actually are some people like Adele and Sam Smith and like Ryan Tedder who probably don't really need it a lot. Or any like folky stuff, or if it's like just piano in them, that might actually just be them. But a lot of pop stuff, it's going to be tuned. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess I'd, it's, yeah, that's like a, I do that a lot. You know, I don't like to see things standing still. Maybe it's. <laughs> Oh, the no. I thought you meant my screen. Yeah, I'll do that again. That is pretty fun. <laughs> Where is that thing? Here it is. Let's get that on. <laughs> so I can completely like change the song. So, you know, if you're doing... It's the right feel of something bubbling up in so you. So this is in B major. So I can, let's see if I can find the right note. Uh, <laughs> so 
so let's hear what what our remake's going to be uh this would be uh you, you, da, 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 da. You, right feel of something bubbling up and you know you can't stay the same <laughs> every Is that what the is that what the crowd wanted? <laughs> How long does it take? Probably three to four hours to write the song, and then like thirty to forty to edit, mix, and master it, and record everything. That's what I would say for like a f pop song like this with all that stuff in it. I'm getting faster. But that's probably that's probably a good estimate because a lot of times you'll have different people doing these parts. Somebody will just be the the producer, which is getting all the sounds, arranging it, that sort of thing, and then they'll hand it to somebody else to mix it, and then they'll hand it to somebody else to master it. And um, you know, each of the production can take anywhere from like four to fifteen hours, probably. Um, to like kind of get everything there. Mixing probably like 10 hours or I mean, no, it can be way less than that if you're actually like a really good mixing engineer. But for me, that's how long it takes. And I kind of blend all those steps together because I just do them all. Um, but yeah, it takes a while. Another one on Friday. We'll just start from scratch. We'll do a 30 hour session. How does that sound? <laughs> 30 hour marathon. <laughs> yeah, so that's that one. I'll probably do another one of those like overview music videos for all the other ones that I do too. Cause this is where I spend all my time in front of this screen looking at this and then I color code them before I show people because it doesn't look this pretty before that it's kind of messy but now it looks pretty pretty clean and pretty cool because then I can you know that's pretty fun to look at right there I feel like that's it's pretty pretty easy to look at <laughs> I have nothing else to do either and I just bought whiskey <laughs> Touche. Oh, um, let me see if that's actually true. And what I mean by actually true is sometimes I, I hide a lot of the rows once I'm done with them. They're kind of just like working rows, um, especially in vocals. Oh, yeah. So the, So right now I have these all unhidden. And these might be even like the earliest takes of where I'm just like recording ideas and I'm never going to use them. But like I said, I never delete anything. So I just hide them and I turn them off. So then it doesn't affect my computer processing power. How's that for nerdy? I promised it was going to be nerdy. But um, so it's not. Yes, yeah, so there are 125 tracks. These are buses, which mean they're not actually audio. There's not actually audio directly on it, but I am sending effects to these channels so then I can control them more accurately and see them visually. Um, these are things like reverb, that little crystal thing, <coughs> echoes, all that sort of stuff. Um, the, and that's important because it lets me mix them separately and get really good separation so that uh, mixing mixing and mastering is about making things not muddy, making them clear, making sure the right things are focused on at the right time and having a similar loudness level to other songs that are out there so that when your song comes on, it doesn't sound like a muddy piece of crap compared to whatever really good pop song is right before or after it. So 
that's what kind of all this super detailed stuff is for. Um, but yeah, like right here, yeah, like it skips 108. So, I'm, so it's not actually 115 active tracks. It's probably more like... Probably more like 70, like 70 or 80. <laughs> yeah, so ping pong delay is a back and forth delay from left to right. And what that means is, let's look at our, um, let's see, where do I do that pretty frequently? Um, I mean, I definitely do that in the chorus vocals. So, yeah. Okay, so on the chorus vocals, I'm sending... It's the right feel of some this is a send, which means I'm sending that audio. In addition to that audio going to my main output, I'm sending the audio to another track where I am affecting it with delay. So that delay... Something bubbling up and you know you can't stay the same. So when I when I stop that, you can hear it kind of go back and back right and forth. Feel of so, so that's going in the going in the right ear, going to the left ear, going back to the right ear, going back to the left ear. That's what delay ping pong is. Phil, I'm going to ban you from that chat. <laughs> That'll delay the game. That'll delay the game 300 seconds. Christina thought she didn't need to delay ping pong against me, but she was mistaken. If I had a ping pong table right now, I'm sitting right next to it. If I had a ping pong table right now, I would play you with this audience right now. <laughs> um, let me see if there's anything else cool. Um, okay. Oh yeah, the other the other thing I skipped. So this happens in EDM music a lot. It's called a side chain and it makes the it makes the sound go like this. <laughs> kind of swelling and non unswelling, receding. Swelling and receding. So it's kind of like that pulsing or pumping sound. So right now it's just kind of going straight. But I have the kick drum. This is a kind of silent kick sound so that whenever the kick is hitting and it's just doing this, every time it hits, the volume of all of the synths and keys go down. So it kind of gives you this. And it just gives it a cool. It, the whole song has more of a beat when you do that. So next time you hear a song going. You can be like, hey, do you know that's a side chain? Do you know that's a side chain compression that they're using on that right now? Possibly a, possibly a tremolo plugin that's set up to act like a side chain. You can tell them that. I learned these techniques from right where we are now on YouTube. Um, yeah, I just watched. Ton well, I mean, first I 
taught myself random stuff in GarageBand. Then I upgraded to Logic. And I didn't really look up a ton of stuff when I was doing that. I just kind of went for it. That was from future self stuff. And then <laughs> now, v -v 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 now, <laughs> then I actually looked up more videos and just scoured the internet once I actually knew what things I needed to learn. And then I learned, learned them and I'm still learning them. Oh, right, right, right. V -v 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 -v. Is that better? Here, we'll make it. Here it is in action. Now you can really hear it. So I turned the compression so that it compresses all the way. Instead of this, that is exactly the lesson. That is exactly the lesson of the day. My goal is to come up with the weirdest sounds so that other people making music are like, How did, what is that? What is that sound? And then they eventually see a video like this, where they're like, listening to this part. That's the goal. That's the dream right there, that noise. Or even this sound. There's another one. Which is literally that sound, but how did I do this? I pitched it up three octaves. So it's just a super high pitched version of that. Yeah, what's that called? Isn't that called something? Uh, there's a, there's a name for those weird people in the room. <laughs> um, I saw a video of it when they did a quiet place cause there wasn't any talking. So like everybody noticed all the sound in that movie. So they had to do, be really good at it. Um, there's a technique, there's a technique that it's called. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what it's called, but there's a word for it. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun, actually. I would do that. I would definitely do that. That'd be so much fun. I don't know how... You'll have to inform us. How are the, how are the Star Wars... Was that like a... Wasn't it like a, an electric cable? Like a, yeah, okay. Yeah, because... Yeah, those rooms, they literally just have... They have like a, a screen showing the movie <laughs> with... Uh, with like maybe the vocals or like maybe the dialogue in their headphones and then you just see them like intently watching the movie and like stomping around in gravel to match the footsteps or like taking um, for the monsters in a quiet place a, st a stalk of celery and twisting it when the eyeballs open and it's just that all day and they're just and it's funny because they're just so they have to get the timing perfect so they're just they're just like looking at the screen super engaged and they're doing weird things like that it's super cool i've seen a bunch of videos on it i would love to go on i would love to see one of those in person that'd be fun steve you're the man the biggest fan <laughs> i insulted the in, the only in person fan i have <laughs> Whoopsies. You're all my biggest fans. Steve, you're a big fan among big fans. <laughs> I 
Oh, yeah. If you guys haven't checked out YBKRN music, he's got some serious bops. Hang on. Let me find a link. I'll put it in here. Michael, this is the music I was showing you, the electronic music. Uh, hang on. I'm finding it. I found it. Where's the... Oh, I haven't I haven't seen the spring burst one yet. This one. Uh, I might be losing internet. There. I don't think I'm casting this audio through because I don't have it set up to do that. But there's a link you guys can check out. It's got some cool electronic music. Yeah, that's the, it was um, Spring Crush was the one I showed you though. This was a different one, the one link that I showed you, but. All right, well. That's all I had. Uh, that's all I had planned. I didn't really have a plan, but that was all I had planned. And now there's nothing else to do. I guess I. Uh, what are you guys doing? I think my internet's really delayed. Said, oh, gotcha. Oh, yep. Now it's finally. <laughs> I love it. Well. I'll definitely have more nerdy videos like this and more streams like this. I also stream on Mixer, Twitch, and this, like actually making songs where it's not already made like this, but it's the process of getting to this. Um, so I think I have some of them up there now. I think they automatically post to YouTube when they're done. But yeah, I'll do more of those um, pretty much whenever I'm working. Since I'm doing it anyway, I just live stream it. Um, especially in like the mixing process. So I've got a bunch of those videos up there and then I just talk to people when they join the chat, S but sometimes people don't join cause I don't have a lot of followers yet. So I just sit there and work and then it's just a video of me working for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sick. <laughs> you should all go check it out, but it's obviously much more fun and entertaining when there are people there. <laughs> Actually, YBK Aaron, you'd probably like it because you make music too, and it would be a lot of super detailed stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to do a live writing session. I think that'd be fun to, to make something from scratch with people live. So that's that's one I'll definitely do. And that'll be, I'll make sure that's not like boring. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be fun. I'll ask for ideas and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, you can get notified by liking or subscribing. And then I'm still learning YouTube, but I think you click the little bell icon somewhere. I think there's a little bell icon on the. Oh, yeah, there's a little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot to show it. Oh, it's going it, to, you're going to click the little bell icon and then it goes to your YouTube settings notifications on your phone. Oh, and then you click allow notifications and then it's on. 
That's my screen share. I just took a screenshot for you guys. Let's see, are there any other little things that I skipped? Oh, there is one little thing. I love doing this. I can't believe I forgot this. So you got your... Here's the hopping at the bottom of champagne. Something I can do to call out different vocal lines different lyrics so first i double it here's the hopping at the bottom of so that's all the way on the right side so first you kind of you're like whoa what was that that sounded different that's because the one vocal is coming from the right so it sounds louder but then not only this bottom of i add this little guy and this guy bottom of so i add that on the left side so you're here's so it's going, the hopping at the bottom of so first it's like right side and then it's like both sides like what was that and that's how it gets your attention and that little guy right there that is this but then I go like this. And then I add this effect. And that is, it's kind of changing the format. So it makes you go, that's the thing that can make you sound like a chipmunk. Except I made it sound like a monster, like this. And then you add a little bit of distortion. Or a lot of distortion. Then you compress it. So it's an equalized volume. And then you spread it out wide with that imager. And then I pan it all left. Send together. And then that fits right around that snugly, right around that main Here's vocal. And I'm doing the same thing over here. Retro hopes and dreams on paper, now they're not delusions. No, but no, if no, you no, say no. them out loud, they sound insane. The other thing I'm doing there. Paper, now they're not delusions. But if yeah. you say. So that's all going on during these different parts. And then, oh, this is the other part I was looking for. So then I layered it even again. So it's got that super high part. You hear that? Sounds like a gerbil or something. And then those little breaths. You hear this a lot in rap vocals, actually. So this is where I got this idea. That's the other place I learn stuff is I listen to songs and then I just figure out how would I make it sound like that. So like in a lot of rap vocals, they'd be like, like and then they like add extra breaths or they bring up the volume on the breaths to, to go with the beat. So it's like, and then, so that's where, that's where I got that. Like, turn up and six months later, try again. So you can use those, those breaths to just add a lot of energy because they're already there. And a lot of times you'll actually hear those quieted down. But if you break them loud, it's going to be kind of cool. All right. That's it. That's all I got. I'm hungry. <laughs> Gonna go eat some Oreos or something. Kaleidos.
It's the generic brand, but they have resealable packages now too, so it's cool. All right. Thank you, everybody who joined. I really appreciate it. That was the premiere of me using YouTube Premiere for the new you music video. You guys are the best.